hello everyone. Thanks again for joining with us with another episode of The Current. Join with Curtis. Excited for another episode today. And I got something on my mind. Okay, let's hear it. The rise of quick star gas stations. That's that's hot in the front of your mind. I'll say that um it's been impressive. If you haven't heard of Quick Star, I wish I could buy stock in their company. <laughs> so there there's like four of them in our area now and there wasn't there was zero. There's none. I think they make up fifty percent of all gas stations here in Mason City, just about. I think they're maybe called Quick Trip elsewhere though. Is that is that true? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think something something is, about here they had to be called Quick Star no, it's because because uh, in Des Moines there's already Quick Trips. QTs. Oh, QT yes. Gas stations are Quick Trips. Okay. Have you ever been to a QT? But they spell it Quick with a Q. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Whereas Quick with trip a K. With a K. But still, there was naming rights. They got mad, so they had to name it in Iowa Quick Star. I don't care what they call it. It's fantastic. But here's the thing about Quick Star. They have incredible service. Incredible service. Always clean. Great prices. Great food for a gas station. They have this chicken sandwich there. <laughs> I'm like, So we don't have Chick-fil-A where we are. If you have Chick-fil-A, God bless you. Yeah, no kidding. You're but favored. They have a chicken sandwich that I swear is the closest you'll get at Chick-fil-A. Is this it the is one? like hand breaded. Yes, I've had this. And it's almost like they use like pickle juice in the fry. I don't understand. Like... It, it it literally tastes incredible. Quick, okay. Here's the. Th- by the way, this episode's not sponsored by Quick Star. Although maybe Dude, in the future, I know we should. We should if they're listening, hopefully episode. they're yeah. Hopefully we'll get in on this. But yeah. So after you're done listening to this podcast, or maybe as you're listening to this podcast, drive down to Quick Star, grab yourself a chicken sandwich. You'll not regret it. Not one bit. And it's not like the mystery meat chicken that you get at gas stations. <laughs> it's not like the <laughs> like the chicken sandwich you got in elementary school, where like it's all mushy. Oh, yeah. Like, this chicken sandwich has literal breading, and you bite into it, and it's, like, flaky. Like, it's pulling chicken off of, like, the meat. It's it feels so like it took good. a KFC chicken something and slapped it in there on a bun. Yeah. And they kind of have their own brand. They have, like, good donuts, like, oh, cheap yeah. donuts. Yeah, they're glazers. Oh, yeah. Donuts? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. I so got to stop. I'm just getting, I'm getting hungry. They also have, like, their own version of Uncrustables. Yes. PB&J. The PB&J sandwiches. I tried that for the first time, per your recommendation. <laughs> also, no regret. None. Oh, man. Quick trip. So good. You know what else is so good? What? The book we're going to talk about today. Yeah, you're right. Great segue. Oh, I know. Dude, that I've was kind of cheesy, but it was awesome. <laughs> All right. The book we're talking exactly. about Exactly. It's going to be so good. So good. Yeah, we're already in the third and final part because summer's coming to an end of our summer reading list. We're trying to let people know some awesome books that you should hop on for the summer, give a read. So we've been trying to give you guys about... One a month, give you time to read it, think about it. So we've covered a couple awesome ones. We did Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire, Jim right. Ball. Oof, so Ball. good. Yep. You need to, you know, believe in God and start getting to praying. Read that book. Mm. Covered Jonathan Martin's um, How to Survive, How to survive a, shipwreck. a Shipwreck. Yep. Fantastic book, too. This is more like, hey, I'm just kind of, I feel like I'm falling apart in life right now. Everything seems to be sinking. What, what should I do? Jonathan Martin's got your back. Yep. Go check out that book. And yep. so... uh we're going to round it out with something a little bit More different. Yeah. yeah. And I like I feel like we're kind of finding a middle ground. We got something that's kind of pretty spiritual. Here's encountering God. We've got one that's like here's some practical life help. And I think we're going to find a, a nice little balance in the middle here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fun fact here before we jump into the book. Yeah. The author of this book was actually the lead pastor of the guy who started our church, really. Correct. Yes, yeah. that is a fun little fact. So they are actually friends, and um, the passion now lives in New Zealand, but Brian's on is in New Zealand, and they actually hung out. And yeah, you know, like yeah. I don't, anyway, like they they know each other. It's kind of which is so, a fun, cool connection. So there is point. some you know trickle down. Yeah, we say. have some heritage. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I uh, for those of you who don't know Brian Zahn, he's a pastor out in Missouri. Let me get that right. Yep. Um, yeah. Awesome guy. Kind of came from the Word of Faith movement a little bit, some more kind of Pentecostal background and stuff. Kind of had a theological reawakening, started reading some stuff, and and began to have a lot of changes. Anyway, um, fantastic pastor, great preacher. uh, As you'll see if you read this book, a a solid author too. But um, yeah, he writes, have we mentioned the title yet? I don't think we have. Okay, Uh perfect. Well, the book we're talking about, Brian Zahn's written a handful. All are are really great. But the one we're going to look at today is called Sinners in the Hands of a Loving God, um, which is awesome. Great title. 
hopefully not all of you will know this but it's it's riffing off a very very famous sermon yep. um uh by jonathan edwards called sinners in the hands of an angry god and so probably you know for better or for worse maybe one of the most famous christian sermons ever delivered yep. um and in this sermon jonathan edwards kind of gives this intense imagery of right um we are these sinners in the hands of this angry god we're like a spider being dangled over the pits of hell and so brian zahn uses this kind of as a backboard really as a as a foil to kind of contrast his picture and says hey you know what what if it's not sinners in the hands of an angry god but rather sinners in the hands of a loving god and so that's kind of the general premise and brian zahn kind of takes you on a ride of discovering this god who is well perhaps not so angry and a bit more loving yeah and before we jump into kind of just a brief summary of the book because we never want to give too much away in these and so these episodes mm. are usually a little bit shorter but um we never want to give too much away but i will say you know, as far as like theological bend um if i were to summarize kind of the theology of myself of you of our church here at rhythm i think this is probably the closest just large work that hits on most of the stances we would take probably theologically yeah um it's a great summary of how we view God, um, of how we think God works with his people. Um, yeah. So I just want to say that up yeah. front. So this is a very good summary of if you're just curious about how rhythm thinks, like our theological positions on some things, this would be a great one to pick up. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the things I love about this book is I think there's not enough, um, just solid theology and thinking that's kind of making its way to the popular level. A lot of the academics are just kind of writing for academics and have their heads in the clouds. Um, and there are a few authors that I think are partnering and taking great scholarship, but also bringing it down to the lay level and saying, hey, how can we really reap the benefits of this theology that sometimes people just don't really have access to or haven't heard of? So um, yeah, this one is a book that does such a great job of saying, hey, we're going to be um, deep thinking here. We're going to engage with scholars. We're going to be, um, yeah, trying to think as best we can about these things, but presenting it in a super accessible, but also really kind of emotionally captivating way too. He has a, uh, yeah, he's a fantastic writer. And you touched on this, but I think it's important for people to understand again, the context of the writer, kind of the author a little bit more as we jump mm. into, you know, the, the book, but yeah. Um, so his church was exploding, like in this small town in Kansas is blowing up. And then he really has a, I mean, he describes it as a water to wine yeah. moment, like in time, excuse me. Yeah. He, he was uh, on the list of like the fastest growing churches yes. in North America. Yeah. It was exploding. Yeah. And huge. He has this massive like theological shift. Like he starts, you know, reading certain guys and just kind of really just, yeah, takes a, a turn in his theology and his church is just dwindled but in his you know like reflection on that it's been for the better you know mm. it's been so much you know more rich and rewarding um obviously it's growing again but it's yeah. you know one of those things where it's not it was know, like what cut it was. in half you know like yeah. cause, i mean people weren't about it you know and but that just goes to show you like once you have like some some deep like theologi theological convictions yeah you know it, it may not be success like the the world says is successful and yeah. as far as a church, but I mean, he's in a, you know, if you read his book, he, he talks about water to wine. Um, I mean, he's in a much better place. And yeah, but I anyway, mean, I just think that context is important is, you know, this isn't the most popular theology in the world, or at mm -hmm. least it wasn't, it's kind of gaining some traction yeah. now, but yeah, he's kind of been on the front end of that. Um, this kind of movement of kind of Jesus centered yeah. Theology. And I think it, you know, not to say that every stance that shrinks your church, church is the right stance to take, <laughs> but I do think it's a good thing to yeah. show like, yeah, what he's not chasing after trying to fill the seats, but just like, let me be as faithful as I can to sure. what I think, you know, who Jesus is and what he's mm -hmm. about. Um, which really is, yeah, what this book is looking to do is present a picture and say, who is Jesus? What is this about? Um, you know, I started off saying, hey, this this book is kind of giving a contrast to the sinners in the hands of an angry God motif. And so really what Zahn does throughout this book is he he kind of introduces you to this picture and says, OK, well, what if we look at Jesus and we say, hey, um, you're going to find this, you know, chapter three. Jesus is what God has to say. So Brian Zahn is really going to put Jesus before us in all of his beauty and splendor and and fullness and say, OK, when we look at this person, Jesus, do we see Jonathan Edwards God um, you know and that's a fair question to ask sure. um, and so Zahn is going to take us through the Gospels looking at a bunch of different theology and help us to see that you know when we take a deep and 
and careful look at Jesus, we don't find the God that Edwards describes. That's Instead, right. we find a God who is like the the prodigal, the father of the prodigal, who embraces him in loving arms, isn't one that dangles him over the pits of hell like a like a little spider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that's so central to kind of what we teach here. It's such a big piece of my heart is, you know, if you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. Mm-hmm. We say it all the time. Um, Jesus is the center of, of all that we teach and do and try to be as humans. And, you know, for a long time in church history, you know, I feel like we were getting this wrong. I feel like, yeah. the, like the earliest disciples got it right. And then for so long, we were teaching this angry God and you mm. know, this, this, you know, sovereign God that's, you know, like a puppet master and like really yes. in some sense not we wouldn't ever say that, but that's really what we're communicating right, right. about God. But there's just something so beautiful about Jesus being the direct revelation of who God is Absolutely. and what he's about. And yeah. So, and, you know, and again, we, we, this isn't, this isn't Zahn trying to say like, you know, what would be nice? Is if God like just really loved us and was just all so nice. Like that, <laughs> wouldn't that be lovely? And, and, this isn't just wishful thinking or like, hey, this is theology that sounds so pleasant to us. But again, doing the hard work of saying, okay, what is it that scripture says? What do we see when we look at Jesus? And again, if we're taking Jesus seriously when he says, whoa, whoa, you know, Philip comes up to him and says, just just show me the Father. That's enough for me. That's all I want to see. Let me see God. And Jesus turns to him and says, oh, Philip, you've been with me all this time and you don't recognize me. If you've seen me, You've seen, seen the Father. Father. Yep. Um, yeah, you know, we look at uh, the Colossians, Jesus is the exact imprint of God's nature. He's the image of the invisible that's God, right. you know. Um, so this isn't, again, wishful thinking theology. This is something that's deeply rooted in the New Testament and saying, look, we want to find out what God is like. Jesus is the white, hot, flaming center of revelation. And so <laughs> Zahn's going to lay this out in front of us just in really, really beautiful ways. Yeah. And like I said, you know, this is such a, it summarizes a lot of just kind of who we are as people. And I remember, you know, kind of my, my journey as well. And I I appreciate that about Zahn is he's very honest about, about his journey. Mm. Um, you know, there's some other topics in the the book. Yeah. So you look at the book, you start off yet. He introduces you to sort of this picture of a God who looks like Jesus. And then really the rest of the book sort of explores the implications of that. Like, Hey, if, if God looks like Jesus, if this is the right portrait, what does this mean for us when it comes to um, violence or vengeance. He's going to have a chapter all about how we understand that with Jesus. It's, I think, closing the door on vengeance. So, yeah. again, we're going to look and say, hey, are, are God's not vengeful? He's not one that's dangling us over the pit of fire. He's not the one that's looking to, we you know, extract his pound of flesh for revenge. Um, you know, he loves us. He forgives. He refuses to retaliate. He's a God that would rather die than, than kill people who deserve it. Um, and so Zahn's going to work out some implications not only of what does that mean for who God is, this beautiful picture, but also, okay, what does that mean for us as we live our lives, as reflect, as faithful reflections of this God found in Jesus? Yeah, I'm so glad you said earlier that this isn't just like a theology that's more palatable, like we want this yes. God that's loving, not angry, you know. But actually, like you said, it actually more it adds more work to the Christ follower because of, like you said, the second half of the book being all the implications of this. Yeah. Um, you know, making Jesus the flaming hot center of who God is has a lot of implications. Yes. You know, and again, Zahn does a great job always of articulating, you know, his stance and it's very always rooted in scripture. It's rooted mm-hmm. in, in the person of Jesus, the historical Jesus. Um, and he just does a really good job yeah. always yeah. Of, of explaining that. But I, it's I, not, it's not easy. It's not, you know, it's not like we just kind of get a, Oh well, like God loves us, so everything's okay. No, it's 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 work. Like yeah, you know, I, it's enemy love. It's 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 things that are counterculture. Is what I was trying yes. to get at. It's very much there are severe implications of this. Yeah, yeah. No, and again, like Jesus is beautiful. Jesus is loving, but we go to him, and I always think of the encounter with the with the gentleman who's like, hey, you know, I want to follow you, and Jesus is like, that's cool. Um, foxes have holes birds have nests the son of man has nowhere to lay his head and essentially he's telling this guy like i'm glad you want to come with me but but understand what it means you're signing on for like hey foxes at least have a go place to sleep and birds have nests but like i've got nothing and if you follow me this is going to be your lot as well yeah so i i think you're right it's it's a beautiful picture but it comes with a high call as well um and and uh i I don't want to give too much i I could talk about the book forever because it's great i don't want to give too much away but um Another one of the things that he looks at then is he um, takes a look at the cross then. What do we, right. how do we understand that? And this is something we've talked about on the podcast multiple times. Um, how do we understand what's going on on Good Friday? What's the cross all about? 
Um, but one of the things he does in this chapter is he kind of offers a thought experiment. And he just says, hey, when we look at the Good Friday story, when we look at the story of Jesus getting crucified, where do we find God? Where is he located in the narrative? Um, and so he says, hey, do we find him in, in the high priest Caiaphas, who says that, you know, one should suffer on behalf of the many? Do we find him in Pontius Pilate, you know, calling for a, you know, a just execution? Do we find him rather instead hovering above Jesus, shooting lightning bolts of wrath into him? You know, where, where is Jesus in this yeah. picture? And what Zond will ultimately argue is that, again, where we always find God is right in the person of Jesus. And so, no, he's not localized above shooting wrath. He's not calling for a scapegoat. Instead, he is one who is bearing humanity's sin, co-suffering with them, refusing to retaliate, and offering forgiveness and grace in response. Yeah. And so, again, just taking this Jesus picture and saying, okay, what are these implications? How do we understand the cross? What does that mean for us? So, um, yeah, just things that can be really, whoa, like I never looked at it this way. Um, and I think this book offers a lot of people to say, okay, you know what? I've never heard it presented this way. Maybe there's, maybe there's other ways to look at this. Yeah, for sure. And, and I will say like, again, we don't want to give too much of the book, so we'll just kind of move on. But I will say if you want to kind of go, I don't know, not necessarily deeper, but you want more kind of content from Brian. Twitter's a great place. Mm. Um, I follow him, but he also has a blog and there's several blog posts that kind of go in depth on certain issues. I, I, that was a kind of a staple for me years ago, just kind of yeah. his blog, just kind of going through mm -hmm. some major just like theological points. He does a great job of breaking it all down. Um, yeah, but he has several other books too that are worthy of, of reading. He's just a, again, great author, great pastor. Yeah. Um, great leader. And I would say this about Zond. Um, I think used to, there used to be more like prophetic voices for the church, but I feel like he is a major, major prophetic voice mm. in the church today. Yeah. Um, I just do. I feel like he has a gift of like prophecy. Like he is seeing kind of like where, you know, people in America are headed. Like he has a, just yeah. a really good pulse on, the people around him. And yeah. um, I feel like he just does a great job of speaking, mm. you know, kind of a prophetic voice over the the people of, of this country, of the people of the world. I mean, he has a worldwide audience, but um, he just does a really, really good job. Of, yeah. Sometimes he comes across as harsh, I will say. Sure, like he can be not, a little polemic at times, yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, but um, I do feel like he has a very strong prophetic voice. And so... Oh, absolutely. Um, I, trust his, I trust his work um, wholeheartedly. Again, he's very vulnerable about his journey. Um, how he got there. Um, yeah. it's, it's just a really, yeah. So I couldn't recommend the book enough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, and I think at the end of the day, what, what I would say to people reading this book is again, people might think, Oh, what wishful thinking to think that God would be so this or loving and that. And, and people would have conversations with me about this kind of theology and they say, Oh, that's so nice. You just want a puppy dog in the sky. And I tell people like, <laughs> trust me, <laughs> believing God to be like this, is difficult. I get yeah. the God that's mad at me and wants to drop me to fall. You know that I don't. What's to me is like, could it be? Could it be true that God really does look like Jesus, and Jesus really is a God who says, um, "Yeah, no, I I will love you. I'll meet you yet. I give you grace unconditionally. I'm the prodigal father with arms wide open." Um, believing those statements is more difficult. So I think Zahn's gonna take you on a journey to say, "Oh my gosh, maybe, maybe God is more beautiful, more." benevolent more incredible than i would have allowed myself to imagined yeah yeah absolutely great summary i think we can end there i think so too awesome. so go grab the book go hit up quick star you know grab a chicken <laughs> sandwich and you'll be good to go <laughs> also though wanted to say that exciting news oh, that's right yeah this particular podcast you're listening to marks episode 52 so one year yeah this will yeah. be one year of the current Yep. per this episode so hey thank you if you've been hanging out for the last year listening to us that means literally the world and yeah. uh if you've jumped just jumped on this week i'm glad you're here too we hope you hang out with us for another whole year wow one year where's the time gone can't believe it yeah, yeah. maybe next summer we'll bring you some more books <laughs> yeah it always helps to to like to share to to pass the word i mean i know it's so encouraging to us we've got you know, some people locally who have shared this podcast with some people that live like, I mean, in Colorado, one example. Yeah, like there's yeah. people, you know, kind of all over. We got a Harvard Law student yeah. listening. Yeah. I mean, it's just super cool to, to hear about how the podcast is being shared. And so if you, if you know people that maybe could benefit from some of this, 
um, yeah, feel free to share. It always helps us. And, and remember that the videos side will be ending soon. So that's right. If you're a YouTube person, you'll have to hit us up in another, that's right. another Spotify, video. Apple podcast. Yeah. You'll find us. We believe. Yep. Well, thanks for joining with us again today in another episode of The Current. Um, we'll be back here next week for more real talk on real topics. Grace and peace. Mm-hmm.